John Quincy Adams was a career diplomat, U.S. Senator, and Secretary of State before becoming the sixth President of the United States. He was the son of the second President and founding father John Adams. John Quincy Adams, we might say, is one of the best prepared people to be a president in U.S. history. He started off his political career as a child. John Quincy Adams was born on July 11, 1767 in Braintree, Massachusetts. At age 10, he accompanied his father, John Adams, to France to secure aid for the American Revolutionary War. By the age of 14, he accompanies Francis Dana, who is an American diplomat to Russia, and acts not only as his assistant, but as interpreter. And that's because at age 14, John Quincy Adams could speak Italian and French, Russian, and of course English, Latin, and German. In 1783, he traveled to France with his father and served as a secretary and translator as they were negotiating the Treaty of Paris. In 1785, John Quincy returned to Boston and entered Harvard College, where he earned a master's degree before going on to practice law in 1790. In 1794, our first president, George Washington, appointed John Quincy Adams to be our minister to the Netherlands. On the way there, he met the woman who would become his wife, Louisa Catherine Johnson, the daughter of Joshua Johnson, who was America's first consul in Great Britain. John Quincy Adams developed foreign policy expertise in a number of ministerial positions. He was a minister to Portugal, Prussia, Russia, and England. He actually served in the U.S. Senate as well. As Secretary of State under President James Monroe, Adams negotiated the purchase of Florida from Spain and wrote the Monroe Doctrine in 1823. The Monroe Doctrine was a diplomatic game changer for the United States. It announced that the United States was going to resist any intervention by European powers in the Western Hemisphere, and as a result, protected Latin American independence. In the 1824 presidential election, when neither Andrew Jackson nor John Quincy Adams won a majority of the electoral votes, the issue was decided by the House of Representatives in favor of Adams as president. John Quincy Adams was not the winning candidate in terms of popular vote or the electoral vote. Andrew Jackson was. Consequently, there were enough people in Congress behind Jackson who wanted to be sure to obstruct anything that John Quincy Adams wanted to do. They were successful. Adams lost his bid for a second presidential term, but did not retire from politics. John Quincy Adams did something which no president before or since has ever done. He ran for a seat in the House of Representatives, and he won. From 1830 until 1848, John Quincy Adams was an active voice for change and abolitionist causes in the House of Representatives. John Quincy Adams is also famous today for his involvement in what's called the Amistad case, a group of enslaved men who were suing for their freedom. John Quincy Adams successfully won the case before the U.S. Supreme Court. John Quincy Adams died on February 23, 1848, two days after suffering a cerebral hemorrhage while orating on the House floor. John Quincy Adams would probably want to be remembered for two things in his life, founding the Smithsonian Institution and his opposition to slavery. 